All right, guys, coming at you with part two of the uh, 10 things, top 10 things that changed, or things that have changed the year after Prozac. I apologize, this video is really late. Um, but I just, the uh, first few times, I've, I've had so many issues, even today, just recording a full video. Like, I just need to get a better camera that can hold just a 10 minute video easily. All right, so let's start off. Um, doing we did one through five we're doing six through ten number six supplements supplements the big supplements that i've taken i'll focus on three and i've done this in a previous video um, multivitamin vitamin d3 um, fish oil potassium powder um, probiotic um, and zinc i really the three i'm going to talk about uh, multivitamin essential we don't get enough the vitamins you can get a huge thing at Costco. Um, we just don't get the all the nutrients they need. The biggest ones B12 and D3, which are more anxiety, depression related. All of them are good, but B12 has a lot to do with energy levels. Same with D3, just better mood and stuff like that. And so, picking back off that, vitamin D3 is essential. That comes from the stuff that we get from the sun. Um, this is essential for energy, sexual health. Um, anxiety and depression um, it it you can get a cheap one at Costco I take one one a day in the summer because I get a lot, a lot more sunlight but in the winter when I don't get a lot more sunlight in the Pacific Northwest it snows I take one in the morning one at night um, it really boosts my mood it makes me feel better and it's good for your moon, immune health too especially when it gets colder outside people are starting to get sick you really try to not get sick and kind of bring you down the uh, last one's fish oil. Fish oil is great because it's more of a health thing. There's a certain type of fatty acid fish oil type. I think it's six and grains are fatty acid three. Um, and so if you have too much grains in your system, it is very bad on your heart. Um, it can constrict your vessels leading to a lot of, well, not constrict. Well, yes, technically constrict. Um, clog, let's put it that way. And so, when you mesh fish oil and those fatty acids together, it helps kind of equal the things out. And so your body runs more efficiently, your heart health is better. It's said to really help out with anxiety, depression, boost mood, and all that good stuff. Um, all right, so number seven. I just look at life lift differently. Um, I take things... Um, I, I guess I, I, I used to just kind of go throughout life not caring, but now it's just every single day. Um, I try to make out like what, what, what happened today? What did I learn from today? What did I do today? How did I progress today? How did I falter today? Um, and there's a fine line between that. People that are super happy-go-lucky, that's awesome. That's fine. But if you kind of let things pass you by, you could miss some opportunities. Now, the other spectrum of that is what I used to be is why I was just a hypochondriac. I just thought about everything, anything that could go wrong. I worried way too much, and that's just not a way to live life. That's you got to live. You can't you can't live like you think you're dying, and um, that's that's how I. And I still struggle with that here and there, but um, you know, progressing towards you know enjoying every day, um, and uh, learning when I fail. You know, how do I how do I progress from this? How do I rise from this? How do I deal with this? Um, so I don't get in these ruts ever again. Um, another kind of life change. People take life so seriously. And I did take things so seriously. I really did. Um, and what I mean by that is like, it, is, it can be as simple as honking at someone, you know, because you're pissed off because they didn't take a right hand turn. Or, you know, just getting pissed at, you know, at the line at the airport's way too long and stuff like that. Like, it's going to happen. Like, there's no sense to stress over these certain things. I look at even my parents and people, and typically I'm pretty good at this, but I've gotten even better um, throughout this year. Is like, what is the point in stressing over it? Like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Some events you can control, some events you can't. And, you know, sometimes the cookie crumbles the way you don't want it to. And that's just how it is. And so instead of freaking out about it, instead of getting pissed off, you know, just be cool, calm, and collected. You can complain about it, yeah, but just don't don't take it out on anyone else. You know? Everything's going to be okay. It's it's 
like situations will work out in your favor and not so you just i mean the ones that you don't you learn from it those ones do you say sweet let's move on um and i think a lot of people can work on that that's more of like a character thing um but i do definitely think that influences how people go about their lives and um can influence anxiety and depression a lot um nine grow up man I still am, am fairly immature, uh, I'll admit that to this day, um, but I definitely have made progress in growing up. I mean, I moved out, I've got a new job, um, starting to pay bills, starting to live on my own, um, and uh, I still have to work a lot on that. I think there's things that I'm immature, I'm forgetful, I'm a little irresponsible at times, um, and I don't. I need to work on my professionalism. Um, because if I ever want to do something with this or like progress in my career, you got to be professional. I mean, people won't take you seriously if you're not professional. Same with being anxious. About, I know people that get like feel crazy and they, it, you know, and sometimes when I felt like I was crazy, felt like I was going crazy, um, I was afraid that people wouldn't take me seriously. Um, and, you know, growing through that. And people do take you seriously. It's just how you convey your message. You know, like, initially it was like, oh, I'm going to die. I feel like I'm going to die. I'm going to die. No, you're not going to die. That's very irrational. Um, so growing up in the matter, like, oh, something's decently wrong. Like, you know, most likely I'm okay. You know, I'll just carry on and not let it bother you. So, um, and in regards to just growing up, like, controlling my own finances, um, and really just understanding that I'm not, I'm not in college anymore. You know, I have to grow up. I have to start making money, start living on my own. And, um, and it's been tough. It really is. And I think this is one of the toughest transitions for people because, you know, college is a fairy tale land. It really is. And then you go into a place like the real world and it, it smacks you across the face. So I'm still growing. I'm still learning. So, um, the 10th and final one setting myself up for success and what I mean by that is you know it can be from diet you know eating better making healthier choices you know I have like you know sweet tea in front of me gushers and um, you know candy is that really the best decision do I really want that sugar high and come down no not really I just don't um, you know Preparing my meals beforehand. Um, I've never done this before because my parents used to always make my meals. Making lunch and breakfast before I go to bed. Um, preparing myself for success. Um, you know, scheduling things in advance. Doing things in advance. I used to be a terrible procrastinator in college. That's just not setting yourself up for success. That's setting yourself up for more stress, possible failures, and... Um, a lot of wasted time. Um, you just got to find a way to set yourself up for success. Like for instance, I'll give you an example. Um, I have been monitoring my car lately and you know, you got to change the oil every 4,000 miles or 3,500 depending on what car you have. It could be longer obviously, it could be up to six, 7,000 if you have a newer car but um, my dad's just been harping on me to check the oil, check the oil. And at 4,000 miles, we found out that my car is now all of a sudden eating up a lot more oil. And if I would not have checked it earlier, probably taken a few more trips to my work and back, I probably would have burned out the engine. So, to recap, if I wouldn't have done that, I'm not setting myself up for success. I'm setting myself up for a complete failure. Instead of wanting to buy a new car, which I do, I have a car with 240,000 miles on it, I now have to buy a new car. That's not setting myself up for success. Go out, buy a new car. I have my, my other cars trashed. And so that's not setting yourself up for success. You know, waking up a little bit earlier so you can get to work on time or early. It just sets up, sets you up so much better, you know? And I know it's hard. Or, you know, you're unsatisfied with your body. Well, you need to go work out. You can't keep making excuses. I mean, it's, yeah. So, I mean, there's been those changes that I made. I've been going to work out more often. I've been showing up to work earlier. I've been monitoring things. I've been trying to clean myself up, make myself look a little more professional. Um, 
and yeah so i really hope you guys enjoyed this series um there's a few video ideas that i have for up next it's it's just one thing i wanted to kind of talk about is how how social anxiety not necessarily like it makes me afraid to talk with people but more along the lines of how it affects me socially and um, when i'm around people um is something that i want to talk about so hope you have had a great weekend football is back um start hopefully we start enjoying fall weather um pray for those in hurricane irma uh safe recovery for the people in texas and pray for the people in the pacific northwest like me we want some rain we need some rain and uh, put out those fires. Have a great day, guys. Peace.